Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, this in this video we will cover signals classification and its properties. The course title is Principles of Communication System. I am Dr. Zishan Kaleem from ECE Department, CUIUR Campus. Let's move to the lecture contents. In this video we will cover useful signal properties in detail. Useful signal properties. There are a number of properties. We will study some here. For example, time shifting. As the name suggests, for example, you have a signal G of T, original signal G of T. Consider a signal G of T and the same signal delayed by T second. So if we have a G of T and if we consider this signal is delayed by T second, right? which we shall denote by phi t. So whatever happens in gt at some time instead t also happens in phi t t seconds later at time instant t plus t now. So it means that if we have a gt so uh, the, if we take uh, there is a delay of a t seconds then if we represent that signal by phi t then this will be equivalent to gt when when there is a delay of time t second so phi t plus t we just named it as a phi so phi t plus t equals to gt so it means that if we have a signal gt and it is delayed by t second and when they, the delayed signal and the original signal will be equal at the time instant t plus t is equal to original signal gt uh, and we can represent phi t equals to g t minus t because just move this t here to here so it becomes g t minus t therefore to time shift a signal by time capital t we replace t with t minus t right so do time shifting if just focus on these two terms g t and g t minus t so uh, we replace t with t minus t thus g t minus t represent g t time shifted by t seconds right if t is positive for example here we put the value of t positive for example 2 so if t is positive the the shift is to the right it is delay right t minus 2 is a delay if t is negative the shift is to the left left so it is called advanced so thus g t minus t is g t delayed by 2 seconds and g2 t plus 2 is advanced left sided by 2 seconds. So in next slide I will show how it looks like. For example look at this. This is our original signal gt and we delayed by t second capital T second. So this is uh, when we look at this signal so it is like this one right. But the similarly if we delay by t second look at this this is delayed we move to the right by t second so similarly we start from here and end to here so it is similarly like gt but delayed by t second so gt is equal to gt minus t right so for advanced uh, if we consider gt plus t so it will move towards this side right left side And uh, let's move to other property. It is called time scaling. As its name suggests, we have to scale in with respect to time. Right? We are, x axis will be scaled. Up. So the uh, time scaling results in compression or expansion of signal in time is known as time scaling. For example, this is your original signal. When it is compressed like this one, it is called time scaling. When it is expand expand like this one, it is also called time scaling. So consider signal gt as shown here this one the signal phi t you must remember that we are using phi t we are renaming the uh, signal when it is delayed or when it is time scaled we name it as a phi t this is another just to represent this is nothing else right so just for representation so signal phi t is gt compressed in time by a factor of 2 so we call the g2 of t because this is compressed signal as compared to g of t 
we named it as a y t right to just for representation actually this is g2 of t but just for representation we named it phi t right therefore whatever happens in gt at some time instant t for example at time instant t here which is capital t1 whatever happens here whatever happens mean what is the shape of the signal here in terms of amplitude so whatever happens at time instant t also happens at to phi t at time instant t by 2 so that phi because it is compressed right whatever happens here at t1 for example there this is happening at t1 by 2 and similarly minus t1 by 2 and similarly at plus uh, but here is not minus plus because they just named at t1 and t2 for ease so we have a t1 by 2 that's happening at t1 by 2 and for t2 it is happening at t2 by 2 right so uh, we can name uh, we can mention it as like that phi t by 2 equals to gt you can you got my point i mentioned that phi phi t is just representation so whatever happening at t1 right it is happening up at t1 by 2 in phi t so when they will be equal it means that when this these two will be equal at what time extent so it will be equal to when phi t by 2 equals to gt so when you put because this is phi t you put here t by 2 so it is equal to gt because this is g 2 t so when you move to here so it becomes phi 2 by t equals to gt and we can write as phi t equals to g 2 t in other way around so observe that because gt is 0 at time t equals to t1 gt is 0 here gt means its amplitude is 0 here and 0 here as well the same thing must happen in phi 2 at half so this is happening at t1 by 2 and t2 by 2 therefore phi t is 0 at t1 t equals to t1 by 2 and t2 by 2 as shown in figure this one if we recorded if gt were recorded on a tape or, and played back at twice the normal recording speed we should obtain we would obtain gt this is an example to uh, clarify this concept for example you are doing some recording on tape recorder and when you play it fast you know there is a feature to play it fast so in actually in fast it means that there is some compression so for compression this type of scaling concept is used. how much you want to compress this compression factor depends for example g2t here 2 is the compression compression factor if it is 3t it is more complex if it is 4t it is more complex right so uh, so on right so uh, this compression it means that in recording the uh, speed of the uh, when you play uh, play again its speed will be much faster as compared to the normal recording speed in general if gt is compressed in time by a factor a the resulting signal where a is greater than 1 the resulting signal is given by phi t g a t as i mentioned that a can be 1 2 uh, greater than 1 sorry 2 3 4 5 so on the other term is come expansion let's move on so using a similar argument as we discussed we can show that g t is expanded it means that slowed down in time by a factor a where a is greater by then one is given by so as i mentioned phi t is just a name to represent gt uh, when there is a modification in gt actually so modified gt so phi t equals to g t over a in previous there was a g a t and here t over a so figure 2.9 c actually this one shows that uh, gt by 2 which is gt expanded in time by a factor 2 so whatever t gt looks here it is expanded here as well for example there was a t1 so <clears throat> here we have a 2t1 and there was a t2 and here we have a 2t2 so this is expansion so when there is a division you must remember for ease there is expansion and when there is a multiplication there will be a compression 
So note that the signal remains anchored at t is equal to zero during scaling operation, means expanding or compression. That point is always same, it fixed. Because this is at time equal to zero. In other words, at time t is equal to zero remain in chain because you know that gt equals to gat we mentioned for compression. So when you put zero here, it will become g0. So when what is at g is a0, a of g t, it is same at g2 t as well, right? Because time is equal to zero. And in summary to time, scale a signal by a factor a, we replace t by a t. And if a is greater than one, the scaling is compression. And if a is less than one, the scaling is expansion. So for ease, we can say that it is always like this way. G A T, <clears throat> right? But when A is greater than one, it is called compression. But when A is less than one, it is called expansion. How? Because look at this. We consider here A one over two, which is less than one, so it is 0.5. And in the previous example, we consider A greater than one, which is it was two. So this was the concept of time scaling. So here you can see that uh, for by doing compression, the in case of a, a recording you did or you perform the recording, this uh, tape recording will move fast, right? But if you do the expansion, it will play it, it will be played slowly. So this is a similar figure, but uh, you can see clearly here, it is a time scaling gt, 2t, gt by 2. Okay, let's just uh, uh, some example. So figure 2.10 ab shows the signal gt and gt. There are two signals, for example, this is gt and this is zt. This is just names. So sketch g3t and z t by 2. So g3t, it is a compression right as we mentioned that if a is greater than uh, one then it will be a compression so let's move on so whatever the signal looks at g 3 t at time this one it will be divided by t in the compressed signal let's see here right so six so divided by three we will get two right so for 12 12 divided by 3 we have a 4 it's not mentioned here but 5 15 divided by 3 we have a 5 so this looks similar at like 5 and 24 divided by 3 it is 8 so this so you can clearly see that there is a compression in g by g3t by doing g3t operation in other case, this is ZT and we need to plot ZT by 2. So it will be just a multiplication here to have a similar figure. So minus 3, so into 2, minus 6, right? Minus 1 into 2, minus 2. So this is expanding, right? This place and then we have a this place, right? And then 1 into 2, so we have a 2 here. So G3t is gt compressed by a factor 3. This means that the value of gt at t is equal to 6, 12, 15, 24 occur in G3t at time instant 2, 4, 5, 8 respectively as shown in the figure 2.10c which I already explained. Similar is the case for zt by 2. Zt is expanded by a factor of 2. The values of zt at t1, t minus 1 and minus 3 occur in z t by 2 at instant 2 minus 2 minus 6 respectively. There is another property called the time inversion. So in time inversion may be considered a special case of a time scaling with a is equal to minus 1. For example, we have a signal previously we discussed g a t. So there was a for compression a was a greater than 1 and for expansion it was a less than 1. So we can consider this time inversion as a special case of a time scaling, but here we have a a equals to minus one. So it can be like g minus t, right? So 
consider a signal this one for example we can view gt as a rigid wire frame hinged at the vertical axis you can see that for example this is your vertical axis this is uh, x axis so you can see that this is a frame for example hinged at the vertical axis so to invert gt we need to invert this one we rotate this frame 180 degree about the vertical axis for example you want to invert this then what will you do you will rotate 180 degree like in this way right so it will be inverted right so about the vertical axis this time inversion at the folding the mirror image of gt about the vertical gives us the signal phi t so if you will move from here right look at this if you move this point is fixed because this is fixed at we are talking about time inversion so this point will be taken from here to here right but the vertical axis at the same point look at this 2 and minus 5 so 5 move to we pick from here and end it here so minus 5 similarly in this case our minus 1 will be fixed so we move from here and to this like this 2 so look at this this to this this is called time inversion so observe that whatever happens in figure 2.1 this is 2.11 a at some time instant t also happen at 2.11 b at time instant minus t occurs at time instant t this is the amplitude what occurs here at time instant minus t is minus 5 So, uh, and uh, we can mathematically write as phi minus t equals to g as I told you it's a renaming or phi t is equal to g minus t. Therefore, to time invert a signal, we replace t with minus t. Thus, time inversion of a signal yields g minus t. So, consequently, the mirror image of gt about vertical axis is g minus t. We call that also the mirror image of a gt about the horizontal axis is minus gt. So here we perform everything across the vertical axis. So this is a mirror image. So if we perform across the horizontal axis, so it is it would be like minus g of t, not g minus t. Why? Because if you will do uh, across the vertical axis, so two will move to uh, this point will remain fixed. It will look like something this way. For example, previously you have this one. So if you do uh, about the horizontal axis, then what will it be? The output will be something like this one. This will move to here and it looks like this way. 2, 2 minus 2. So this is the case of time inversion. Uh, this is across the mirror image across the vertical axis and if you need the mirror image across the horizontal then it will be equivalent to minus g of t naught g of minus t. The other example, uh, just to show the concept, for example, the signal gt shown in figure 2.1, this one, right, scale g minus t. So what you know to do, you don't need to change the amplitude of the vertical part, just you need a mirror image. So minus 5 will move to the 5 and minus 1 will move to the 1, right. So just pick from here and rotate. So this point you just pick and move to the other point. So 1 will be moved to minus 1 will be moved to 1 and minus 5 will be moved to 5. So this is the example of time inversion. Thank you for listening. For question answer there will be a separate slot and the exact time and date will be communicated later on. Thank you very much.